In this video, we're going to do another step-by-step -step solution, this time solving for the value of a call option using the Black-Scholes option pricing model. Black-Scholes definitely looks worse than it is. When you break it into parts, it's just a plug-and-chug problem, and that's how we're going to approach it. With one exception, Black-Scholes can be solved in Excel or using the TI. That one exception is the normal distribution values, ND1 and ND2. There are Excel functions to compute these, but no way to find them in the TI. Now, solving for the components, though, does require several other functions in Excel and several special keys in the TI. Before we go further, look at the second component of the call formula, E raised to the minus RT power. This is continuous discounting. We've been working pretty much with discrete discounting and compounding. The discrete form of that would be 1 divided by 1 plus R raised to the T. The minus RT makes it discounting. A positive exponent makes it compounding. Raising e to a power in Excel uses the equal exp function. In the TI, e is the second key above ln to the left of 7. We'll see both the Excel function and the use of the TI key in the example. We also need to use the natural log function. In Excel, this is equal ln. In the TI, it's the key to the left of 7. We'll also need to take the square root of a value. In Excel, this is the equal SQRT function. In the TI, there's a dedicated key for it, square root, right above the left paren. Now, as I mentioned, there's no way to find normal distribution values in the TI. Excel has more than one normal function. We need to be sure to use the standard normal. Look at the S in there. Standard normal assumes the mean is 0 and the variance is 1. Regular normal requires you to specify the mean and variance. Finally, we're going to need to square a value. In Excel, raising to a power uses the caret, which is the shift 6. In TI, there's a dedicated key above the right paren, x squared. With that introduction, let's look at our problem. So here's our sample problem. Stock A is currently selling for $42. $40 options are available with a six-month or half-year maturity. The risk-free rate is 10%, and Stock A's price has a volatility of 20%. That's all we need to solve for the price of a European call. It's possible to solve for the call pretty much in three cells, D1, D2, and the call. The potential for error is greatly increased trying to keep the order of operations correct with so many components. So let's work our way through each component. I'm going to start going through the Excel version of finding each of these numbers. Then I'm going to show you how to do them in the TI. So our first value up here, straightforward division, P divided by X. P, X. To get the natural log of that, it's equal ln standard deviation squared caret 2 the square root of time equal sqrt times the time is equal minus the risk-free rate times the time and to get an exponent raised to the minus rt it's equal exp that value now, here's where we've got all our base values. We're going to break the calculations down into components to make it easier and less error prone. So, the first component of D1 in the numerator is just ln of p over x. The second part is equal to left paren, the risk free rate, plus another left paren, variance divided by 2 close parens, times the time. D1 numerator is the sum of those two values. D1 denominator is the standard deviation times square root of time. And D1 is just the numerator divided by the denominator. To get the normal distribution value, here's where we use NORMSDIST of that value. D2 is D1 minus the denominator of D1, and again, we get the norm distribution value. To finish out, to get the value of the call, let's get the first component of the call, the P times ND1. The price times ND1. 
The second component is the strike price or exercise price times e to the minus rt times nd2. And our call value is component 1 minus component 2, $4.76. Now, knowing that we cannot get these two values with the ti, but we can get some of the others. So let's start back over here in the ti to get that value. It would be 42 divided by 40 equal ln. Let's store that in register 1. The variance is 0.2 squared. Let's store that in register 2. The square root of time is 0.5 square root, and let's store that in 3. To get the e to the minus rt, we need to do the risk-free rate times time equals, make it negative, second, and let's store that in 4. Now, the D1 numerator is already stored in 1. To get the D1 numerator part 2, we want to use our parens. My paren, 1 plus left paren, recall 2, divided by 2, close paren, times 0.5. And let's store that in 5. So the D1 numerator is simply Recall 1 plus recall 5. And we're going to store that in 6. The D1 denominator is 0.2 times recall 3. And we're going to store that in 7. And finally, D1 then is recall 6 divided by recall 7. And we store that in 8. To get D2, we're going to recall 8 minus recall 7. While this step-by-step -step is laborious, it's by far the safest approach to solving any complex equation with multiple components, and certainly is the best approach to solving an involved formula like the Black-Scholes model.